Welcome to today's 30-minute pre-recorded webinar entitled, What Does That Emoji Mean? I am Andrea Shirey, an IT consultant at Bear US LLC. I am part of the Legal and eDiscovery Solutions Group. Today, I am joined by our speaker, Matt Mahon, National Manager, Information Government, Governance, and eDiscovery Sales from RICO. Um, Matt, thanks so much for joining us, and you can kick it off with the first slide. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. Um, appreciate you joining this ULTA webinar on a topic that's very passionate, that I'm very passionate about. So we're going to talk about emoji, uh, their impact to e-discovery and information governance. And we'll start with a little bit of a history. So emoticons were invented in 1982, at Carnegie Mellon uh, University in the computer science chat room. Uh, there were some chats going on and people weren't know if people were kidding or if it was an actual serious post. So the professor said, hey, colon, write parenthesis, and that means it's a joke. So there, there was the uh, emoticon, 1982. Then in 1999 in Japan, the emoji was invented. So we'll see how uh, the utilization of emoji has grown with the history here. As you can see, the Unicode Consortium uh, has some standardization to emoji. So they'll say, hey, this is the Unicode for a cow. Now, regarding those standards, now Google, Apple, Samsung, uh, Microsoft, they will create their own cow emoji. So that could be a black cow, a brown cow, a white cow with black spots, a cow head, it all depends, but they do create some standards. So as you can see now in 2019, we have 3019 Unicode um, approved emoji and that's only grown in 2020. Some were delayed because of the pandemic like many other things. So utilization is increasing in popularity and actually in 2015, the Oxford Dictionary had the tears of joy emoji, the pictograph itself, not the actual word emoji was the word of the year. And that caused, uh, I guess amongst some of the literists out there, they, they had some challenges with why is a pictograph, why is an emoji the word of the year, but it's because of the popularity. It was the most utilized emoji in the world and it still is today. Uh, in the workplace, though, you're starting to see the thumbs up emoji be the most utilized emoji at work. But 2016, we had over 2.3 trillion mobile messages that contain emoji. 73% of the connected population use emoji at work, with 33% of those, and excuse me, 73 use them in personal communications and 33% at work. Now you go to 2019, all of a sudden you've got 92% of the connected population utilizing emoji was 61% in the workplace. So some significant growth. And what's interesting is you can see 72% uh, were hesitant to utilize emoji in the workplace for the first time. Um, a little further breakdown here of how emojis were used at work. 36% with people at their same level. 13% uh, doesn't matter what level they're at. 14% or 12% with only internal facing communications and just 4% with external facing communications. So again, this is due to a, an emo, a Adobe survey in 2019. Uh, my assumption is in 2020 with the pandemic, with different types of communication platforms, uh, more utilization of Teams, Zoom, uh, chat rooms, et cetera, that 4% is going to greatly increase in 2020 and a lot more communications externally are utilizing emoji, including internally. So what are some challenges associated with emoji uh, in documentation and communication? And here's a, an example of a nightmare scenario. Uh, so it's an email, need coverage for James. Seriously, James called off again, what's the deal? Why does that surprise you? Handicap emoji, handicap emoji, handicap emoji. So utilizing the same emoji over and over again is similar to multiple explanation points at the end of a, of a sentence. Uh, so why is this a challenge? Well, prior to last year, there was really no technology or e-discovery technology that allowed for the collection of emoji. So if you were going to collect this email, it may look something like this. So you have no emoji and all of a sudden you collect this email, you think you do it in a defensible manner and you look at this email now, it doesn't look that damaging. It doesn't look discriminatory. Um, however, you might go into a deposition or do a production and receive a production from the opposing side with the three handicap emoji present. That definitely changes the tone of this, of this uh, email and it does make it serious and would be damaging in the case. So really important that uh, the proper technology is utilized. Uh, Celebrite did create with their new uh, mobile device collection tool, the ability to collect emoji, which is fantastic. 
But if you know emoji are potentially relevant in the case, it's important to ask those questions and ensure that they're collected so the proper meaning of a communication uh, can be presented and reviewed. Here's another example. Um, Mary came into my office today. Apparently John is making suggestive comments about something she was wearing yesterday. Can you please look into this? I'll be out on vacation until next week. The response, are you kidding me? She complains about everything. Yeah, I'll look into it. Painting nails emoji. So the response itself uh, isn't great. Uh, doesn't seem like they're taking the complaint very seriously. So one can argue just based on the response itself, um, this, this complaint wasn't handled appropriately. Uh, that's doubled down with the painting nails emoji because what that means is I have better things to do. So again, imagine if you collected it without the emoji, doesn't look great based on the text, um, but you add the emoji in, it just doubles down on the fact that maybe this complaint wasn't taken seriously. So are on the frontier of a new language. Um, it's possible the world's first emoji translator was uh, hired in, uh, in London. And as you can see there, the earth, the gold medal, the smiley face, person speaking, world's first emoji translator. And the main reason for this actually wasn't for litigation purposes or for somebody translating the document. Uh, as you know, in, in litigation, you may have to have a certified translation of a foreign language document so you can authenticate that uh, communication in court. So far, the, the courts haven't stated that. They've allowed the jury themselves to determine what those emoji mean. Um, but also in marketing and workplace communications, different emoji mean different things across different geographies and different generations. So it's important when you utilize an emoji in a communication that you understand who the audience is and how they may perceive that emoji. I'll get more into that later in this discussion. So some translations, like, okay, a new language, we've got one emoji, I put a smiley face at the end, it means I'm kidding, or it means I have a happy tone, or a frown means I'm sad and disappointed in that discussion, or the heart, which means you like what the person is saying, or, or you, um, you value what they're saying. But here are some additional, uh, just examples of sentences. So not only are emoji utilized to convey maybe the, the tone of a certain sentence, but some people are actually utilizing emoji as language itself, so it's like hieroglyphics uh, in 2020. And so they are creating sentences and speaking back and forth in full emoji. So we talk about providing some clarity to the text, clarity to the tone of the text um, for emoji and that, and that usage, but you've got to be careful across platforms. So I give this old example, this was back in the Lotus Notes days, but uh, I think it's still a great example that depicts what I'm talking about here. So on the left-hand side, this was Lotus Notes. So I received uh, an email um, sent from someone's iPhone, and it looks like, uh, I don't know, almost a, someone with a sleeping face mask on and a, a sideways smile with a thumbs up. But again, you can see it was sent from an iPhone. Now on the iPad, which is an iOS device to iOS device, if you go iPhone to iPad, you see the sunglasses, smiley emoji, which means cool, and the thumbs up. Um, so. Basically meaning cool sounds good. So that's probably what the sender sent. Then you go onto the Samsung phone and you look at what it looks like and you have a smiley face with, with sort of slanted eyebrows. Maybe the, the person is mad or upset and the thumbs up. And that was on the actual preview screen. And then when you open the email itself on the phone, there's no emoji at all. They're gone. So it depends on what device you view the emoji on. You might see something different or no emoji at all. So it's really important when you're doing type of investigation is to understand what type of device did the initial sender send the uh, emoji from and what did the recipient receive and what did, they, what did they view. And if you're sending an emoji, you might want to understand what it's going to look like across all platforms. So a little marketing mishap, an example of this uh, said Samsung dishonors Cookie Monster by using the cracker as the cookie emoji. Uh, that was the title of the article, which is kind of funny, but it gives you an example on the right hand side of how the cookie emoji looks different in different platforms. Again, there's a standard Unicode emoji for cookie. So if you send cookie from an Apple device, you see what the Apple looks like to a Samsung device, the time you would have gotten a saltine cracker. So you sent chocolate chip cookie, saltine cracker is what was received. So you can see what a tweet would potentially look like on, on the Samsung device with saltine crackers instead of chocolate chip cookies. 
So a great example of how it could look differently. Another example that's a little more serious was the gun when Apple changed the gun to a squirt gun, which was great to make it a little more playful. But imagine if you sent that to a different device and they got a real pistol, you might have been had a playful, hot, you know, hot summer day with beach ball and squirt gun and somebody else got an actual pistol and may have taken your message as being threatening. So again, careful on which emoji you're used, how you're using them and what, what type of text uh, you're sending them into. And how about highly regulated industries? Uh, another place where emoji, uh, it, it's important to understand what emoji you're used and provide some definitional standards of what emojis uh, should be used and what types of communications they can be used in. Uh, if a stockbroker, for example, was sending some sort of a, a stock tip or a fund tip, or hey, do you wanna invest in this fund along with a stack or a bag of money emoji, that could be deemed as promissory and, and against SEC regulations. Uh, secondary meetings can emerge quickly and really third or fourth meetings can emerge quickly. So not only is it important to look at the emoji and what type of context it was, it was sent in and from what type of device, but also the timing of that emoji. Uh, as you can see, this was a tweet that was sent out by Lizzo on September 24th of 2019. So about a year ago, uh, I am peach emoji M-E-N-T. So the peach not only meant peach, it has also a secondary meaning. And then the third meeting now became sort of an anti-Trump sentiment. So depending what the text said, it could be some type of harassment text. It could be speaking about a fruit or it could be making a political statement. Um, so real quickly with a, uh, someone as, as famous as Lizzo that has as many followers as Lizzo, Lizzo as you can see, it had 121,000 likes, uh, 20, 1,500 people talking about it at one time. Uh, very quickly, uh, this, this emoji took on a third meaning. So important to, to look at the context and understand what's going on. And one way to do that is you can view social media platforms such as Twitter and run some searches on certain emojis and see what type of tweets and communications those emojis are being used in so you can get a better idea and understanding of what it means. So how about emoji case references? Uh, Eric Goldman from the University of Santa Clara, professor of law there, uh, is really an emoji law expert. He does a lot of research on emoji and is looking at how many cases actually reference emoji and emoticons. And you can see this obviously is exponentially increasing. I can see this actually continuing to exponentially increase, especially as technology has developed to better collect emoji. Um, people are more informed to ask about and ensure that emoji are pop properly collected and just that the terminology is more widely used and, and recognized. So judges can reference them correctly as well. It is hard for, you know, uh, Westlaw and Thomson Reuters and those types of platforms right now to actually put the pictograph emoji in there so you can search and see how it's used uh, in case references. And the most litigated emoji, really not surprising, it's a smiley. I guess the, the hard thing to really determine here is, is it a standard smiley face? I would think so for the most part, but there's different types of smileys. So they all get kind of lumped in to the one smiley category and you've got the winky, the sad face, the gun. So not surprising that more utilized emojis are actually the most litigated at this time. Uh, hopefully eventually they're, they're named by their actual Unicode standards. So we know specifically which emojis are, are being litigated and discussed in court. So I have some case law. This is an interesting one from Israel where they said the emoji can signal your, your intent. I purposely left the emoji blank here for a second. I'll pull up the stream in, in a moment. I want to read what the judge stated. This emoji text message, laden text message sent by defendant two on June 5th, 2016 was accompanied by quite a few symbols as mentioned. These include a smiley, a bottle of champagne, dancing figures and more. These icons convey great optimism, although this message did not constitute a binding contract between the parties. This message naturally led to the plaintiff's great reliance on the defendant's desire to rent his apartment. So he ruled in favor of the plaintiff for one month of rent. And what did that emoji string look like? You got the dancing lady, the peace sign, a comet, chipmunk, and a ball of champagne. What is the chipmunk doing there? That's a great question. Uh, actually, Eric Goldman, he hypothesized, and I actually agree with him, 
when you actually are on your text messages and you utilize emoji, your most used are on the left-hand side, like a, like a most used library. So you can quickly access them. So it's quite possible this was an emoji that uh, this individual used often or had used recently. And thus it just got strung into or stuck into this long emoji string. Although if you were on the jury taking a look at this emoji itself, I think it's easy to, to see that, hey, this is, this is uh, positive, it's celebratory. What does it specifically mean? I don't know, but it's definitely celebratory uh, in nature and, and positive. And that's where I think it's important for the jury to be able to see the emoji and make that determination themselves based on what the emoji looked like and what types of texts are before and after. <clears throat> Additional case law, Apatow v. Munich. So an employee was on leave, they had an asthma condition, and there was a tip that someone saw this individual moving and doing outdoor activities. And so they hired a private investigator and the investigator saw the same thing, uh, same evidence, and that led to the actual termination of the employee. Little did the employer know that the employee was actually following doctor's recommendations, saying, hey, you know, your asthma condition may be caused by the air at work, you might have an issue with you just need to be away from your work site. Additionally, your asthma condition may improve if you increase some of your physical activity. Um, so the employer naturally said, hey, honest mistake. We didn't know that they're following doctor's recommendations. Had we known, uh, we wouldn't have terminated. Uh, however, in an, an internal email uh, that was produced, you can see some emoticons, a smiley, did Ray chat with you about Elena? Yes, he did. Thank you for your help. That deserves a big and it's emoticon smiley. So back to appropriate places to utilize emoticon or emoji at work. Uh, anything regarding an HR investigation, termination should definitely be off limits. In the United States versus Wesley, uh, this is an interesting case as well. I mean, I, didn't, I learned about what these emoji mean. So court addressed a probable cause warrant to search some Facebook accounts. Uh, an ATF agent who was familiar with how uh, gangs and, and drugs, uh, I guess, drug runners communicate and what type of emoji they use and what they mean. Uh, provided an affidavit saying the public facing post included a cloud emoji, which is a reference to drugs and a gas emoji or a gas pump emoji that's a reference to gangs. Uh, so because of that ATF agent's expertise, understanding of these communications and Facebook posts, you know, the court actually denied the motion to suppress the evidence as they said they did have a uh, probable cause for that warrant to collect that evidence. Uh, the United States versus Ulbricht. This is uh, one of my favorite rulings here. Emoji and emoticons were omitted uh, from the court transcripts and online chats. They were just in brackets that said emoji or emoticon. They didn't actually have the emoji or emoticon itself. Honorable Forrest says, hey, this is part of the evidence of the document and the jury should read them. They are meant to be read. The jury should note the punctuation and emoticons. So important again for the, uh, the jury to be able to see the emoji and how they're used in the text string or in the communication string and they, they can make uh, their own references to what that actually means in their own determination and conclusions. So I mentioned before, e-discovery technology is catching up. So Celebrite, if you take their standard Excel report when doing a mobile phone collection, for example, you get a large Excel report with all types of different metadata and information, including date and time and like to and from, from a text message string and the body of the string. So if you're doing an initial investigation, you do a collection of a, of a phone, you actually get the emoji now as well. Uh, Microsoft has a Seago UI emoji text pack. So it allows you to actually read the emoji and you can search on, on the emoji as well. So if you want to look for certain emoji or communication strings that have those emoji, you know, these, these Excel reports could be 10,000 rows. Um, you can quickly just jump to those, those messages that contain uh, the emoji. So I think that's a big step up in, in, in terms of being able to do a quick investigation. It is important to note though, again, this is gonna be displayed in the Seago UI emoji. It's not gonna really display custom emoji. It's not gonna display the exact emoji sent depending on what type of device that they have. So that will need to be noted. And then additionally, we need to go into further review. Uh, Relativity created with their Relativity Short Message uh, Viewer. You can convert these types of files utilizing the Relativity Short Message format and actually load these strings in properly in a more viewable way into a review platform and again run searches on the emoji themselves. 
Uh, important to note though, again, with, with uh, relativity, it, the emoji that's gonna be displayed is gonna depend upon which web browser you have up. So if you have Internet Explorer, you're gonna get the Microsoft pack. Also, when you do a production, it's gonna produce utilizing the Google set of emojis. So it's very possible that a, uh, you're, you're investigating or reviewing uh, a communication string that was sent from an iPhone um, using Apple emojis to a Samsung device that's using the Samsung set of emojis being reviewed on Internet Explorer using Microsoft's emojis and then being produced utilizing Google emoji. I would argue 99% of the time it's not gonna matter. At least the emoji is there. Um, much better than it not being there and having the full communication produced. Uh, that being said, if it's a smoking gun or a very critical document, it'll be very important to, to provide that supplemental information that states what type of device that emoji was sent from and it was received and maybe provide what that emoji looked like from what it was sent and received um, versus just relying on the production out of the, out of the tool. So. Again, good thing that technology is catching up. I think it is important to ensure that emojis are collected and produced to avoid any spoliation claims. So should we use emoji in the workplace? Uh, Wall Street Journal came out with an article. There's numerous studies regarding employee engagement. I would even think of studies now during the pandemic of employee engagement with emoji. And you can talk about gifts and memes and, and all of that. Um, I would say absolutely yes, I'm a huge proponent of it. That being said, again, there needs to be some definitional standards, some governance around it, and some training around which uh, emoji are appropriate to be used. Uh, this was last year, so this was prior to the pandemic explosion of utilizing some of these collaborative platforms. But last year, Slack had 26 million custom emoji uh, that had been created. And then for the 13 million daily active users of Teams, Emoji was basically universal to the Microsoft spokesperson. And Slack CTO said that one corporate customer used more than 50,000 custom emojis. Now that seems a little bit crazy. Uh, I recently ran into, uh, or diving into Slack a little bit more, found out that they have something called a React G channeler, which is an application within Slack that allows you to take messages in from one channel and automatically create a workflow to another channel to save certain types of communications. So if there's a final sort of decision being made, you can use a custom emoji and it'll automatically send that to a channel. Uh, Slack specifically uses this for whenever there's an innovative idea. They have a custom light bulb emoji that they utilize in the message as a, like a, you know, again, an innovative idea. That message automatically gets routed to another Slack channel that they share with their outside counsel for patents uh, applications. And that can allow for a quicker, um, I guess going to the court quicker and getting that, that patent application in place. So that could explain the 50,000 custom emojis if you have multiple business units using the custom emojis different ways to provide these workflows within different Slack channels. Still a lot, it would be a nightmare in the litigation if you had to understand the, the uh, meaning of all 50,000 emoji. So if you have custom emoji, really important to, again, explain to the employees, what each emoji mean, where they're supposed to be utilized and have some sort of a library, a dictionary that should an investigational litigation come up, you can produce to help uh, your counsel review documents and understand their meanings. So a few takeaways, we talked about awareness, talked about having some governance, having some definitional standards associated with emoji so people understand um, what, their, what communications are appropriate for emoji and what emoji specifically mean. So these on the left here, probably okay. Uh, important, the thumbs up emoji. For contracts, be careful if someone says, hey, are we good to go on the contracts? Do you agree with the T's and C's? And you get an emoji back with a thumbs up. Is that now a contract agreement? Love to see that in court one day and what that looks like and how that's argued. Uh, additionally, it's the most used, like I mentioned in, in, uh, in the workplace today, but in different parts of the world, Middle East, for example, in different generations, like older generations, that might be an offensive gesture. So if you're in contract negotiations with someone in the Middle East, they ask, hey, is everything okay? What do you think of the red line? Do you send back a thumbs up? That could maybe break down those negotiations and that communication. So again, important to know who you're sending what emoji to and where. Uh, these ones on the right, probably not okay for work. Uh, maybe unless you're a knife manufacturer or some sanitation company, or a lipstick manufacturer, there might be a reason to use some of those emoji, but again, 
uh, important to note which ones mean and have some definitional standards and train your employees on what they mean. Uh, additional takeaways, custodial interviews. I think it's imperative that these get added to custodial interviews. What communications are out there? Uh, what are being used? Are you using Slack? Are you using Teams? Are there Zoom chats, text messages, uh, WhatsApp, whatever type of application? And are you using emoji in workplace communication? How are they being used? And what do they mean within your business unit culture? So all questions that need to be asked and then create some sort of a plan with your uh, discovery expert or counsel to ensure that those are collected properly and that there's no spoliation. As we saw with the earlier uh, nightmare examples, uh, it can really change the meaning or add to the meaning of a, of a document of communication. Uh, drafting an emoji policy, that, again, this will, will create some governance. Uh, which business communications are okay for a, a emoji? Uh, what emoji can be used in those communications? Uh, if there's marketing and social media, really important to know who's your audience, who's gonna be reviewing it, and do those emoji have secondary or third meanings uh, that may offend somebody. Uh, last thing you wanna do is have a reputational um, brand problems because of an emoji that was sent as part of a marketing plan. Uh, that being said, it's proven over and over again that emails that are sent out with emoji in the subject line have a better chance of being opened and viewed. And with that, I'll take on any questions. If Andrea has any questions for me, also you can contact us at our email below. I'd be happy to hear any feedback you have, uh, what your organizations are doing to handle emoji and, and any questions. Great, Matt, thanks so much. I mean, some of it's funny. I like kind of screenshot some of them so I could send my husband some of these um, emoji strings, but this is um, very important for firms and corporations to understand emojis and it's very impactful. Yeah, so I, I really appreciate you, great job. Thank you very much. Yeah, and again, any questions, feel free to reach out. It's been a pleasure being on the, the ILTA channel and hope you all learned something today.